Okay, we are into the last video of this series, just solving problem 8-2-A from our accounting workbook. The trickiest of the three, double declining balance depreciation. So we purchased this asset on March 31st, 2024, and we want to depreciate it, and this time we want to use double declining balance. This is also called an accelerated depreciation method. So units of production says, hey, you know, you bought the car, and, and it matters what how much you use it, not time going by. Double declining balance says, when does a car lose most of its value? And there's a famous like saying about this, they say a car loses most of its value when you drive it off a, off the lot, right? As soon as the car goes from being a new car to a used car, guess what? A lot of the economic value is lost and we should depreciate an asset faster in the early years and slower in the later years. That's what double declining balance method says we ought to be doing. So it's, it says depreciate the asset fast. That's That's the fairest way to do it. So let's do that with our asset. So to do it, we actually need to make a little table, a chart. And here's what our chart's going to look like. We're going to have year here and uh, number of months, just as we've kind of done before. Uh, I want this one to say beginning book value. Uh, we're going to have rate, depreciation rate. Maybe I'll call it depreciation rate. Uh, depreciation expense. We'll have ending book value over here. So it's a bit of a table we're going to be making. And it's going to have quite a lot of calculations on our part, quite a lot of work to be done. So uh, our starting year was 2024. And actually, I can just do all of our years, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 2025, 20, 2026, 20, 2027, 20, 2028, 20, 2029. The number of months. Well, again, it's three was it 312s? I think it was 912s because we bought it in March. Yeah. 912s then in the first year and 312s in the last year and all other years were 12 twelfths, right? Just full years. Okay. What was our beginning book value? What was the asset's value when I purchased it? Now, this is the first of these methods that doesn't use depreciable cost as a starting point. We're not using that number. We're using the purchase price of the asset, just the cost of the asset. Book value is the cost of the asset minus any depreciation. Well, guess what? The beginning book value is the cost of the asset. There's no depreciation. Depreciation is zero on day one when you purchase these purchased the asset. So our beginning book value is $25,000. Depreciation rate. Now this is a place where we've got some work to do. And this is, I don't know, just a little bit arbitrary, I suppose. Here's what you do to get a depreciation rate. You take the number of years you think the asset's going to be useful for. So five years. You take one divided by that number. So one divided by whatever that number is. One divided by five. And you, you give yourself a percentage here. So it's uh, one divided by five is 0 0.2, which of course translates to 20%. Now that would be good if we were doing single declining balance. We are not doing single declining balance. We are doing double declining balance. So we multiply this by two. 20% times two gives us 40%. That is our depreciation rate. And again, it's, it's just kind of arbitrary steps here. We say, okay, number of years, Five, you take one divided by the number of years, you get a percentage multiplied by two because this is accelerated. We're trying to pre depreciate this thing fast. So our depreciation rate, I just about put the wrong number here, 40%. Okay, so let's do our first year's depreciation. We take, and, and all you do for depreciation expenses, you take these three first numbers, multiply them. Nine twelfths times 25,000 times 40% times 0.4 is $7,500 in depreciation in year one. So what is my ending book value? Well, if I had beginning book value of 25 
and I'm going to depreciate this asset for $7,500 in year one, my ending book value is 2,500 minus 7,500. It's 17,500, right? This thing has lost $7,500 in value. So my beginning book value for year two, 17,500. My rate, still 40%. Now, 12 twelfths, I'm not even going to bring into the calculation. It's one. One times anything is just the same thing. I don't I don't even need to include it in, in future years. Only partial years does this really matter. Uh, so 17,500 times 40% is 7,000. Uh, so I had 17,500. I'm depreciating it by 7. Now I'm down to 10,500. Take that as my next period, 10,500 times 40%, 10,500 times 0. 0.4 is 4,200. And uh, 10,500 minus 4,200 is 6,300. Okay, I'm gonna be have a problem here in just a moment. 6,300, so actually I'm gonna start writing this in red. Do not write what I write here. Okay, there's about to be a problem here. 6,300 times 40% is 2520. And 6,300 minus 2520 is 3780. And I have a problem. And this is where a double declining balance can get a little tricky. You cannot depreciate this below $5,000. Why? Because that's our ending residual value. We have to stop at $5,000. Stop depreciating when you get to $5,000. So what do I need to do here? I need to cancel this. I need to say, look, I'm not going to multiply this by 40%. I'm not going to depreciate 2520. And I'm not going to go down to 3780. I have to stop at 5000 5,000 was my residual value. I've got to stop there. We hadn't incorporated the 5,000, right? We started at 25. We hadn't considered this 5,000. Now we got to consider it. So when we kind of go below 5,000, we say, oh, no, no, pump the brakes. We've gone too far. What we should have done was rather than taking a depreciation rate of 40, we should have just plugged, and that's the technical term for it. We're going to plug in the number that makes this work. I want to end at 5,000, how do I go from 63,000? And let's fill in the blank here. Let's make our ending balance 5,000. How do I go from 6,300 to 5,000? It would take depreciation of 1,300. And again, that number is a plug, P-L-U-G. So I've gotten to my uh, ending book value that I wanted. What do I do in the next year? Well, I have a beginning book value of 5,000. Again, I'm not gonna depreciate this. I plug. My next year's depreciation is zero. Why? Because I want to end at 5,000. And in the last year, the 3 twelfths, none of this stuff matters. I started with 5,000 as my beginning book value. Depreciation doesn't matter. It's a plug. It's fully depreciated. I'm de I've depreciated as far, rather, as I'm willing to go here. So I end up at 5,000. When I ask students to do this, I do demand they tell me that the depreciation is zero in these last two years and also that they know when to stop. So this can be tricky, right? It's not sort of intuitively. You kind of get in the mode where you're just like, take 40%, next, take 40%, next, and you just got to know where to stop. And that's what double declining balance uh, demands of us. So I'm going to actually put this up in my table, 7,500, 7,000, here we go. 7,500, 7,000 in 2025, in 2026, 4,200, and in 2700, uh, 2027, rather, 1,300, then zero and zero were our last two periods. And 7,500 plus 7,000 plus 4,200 plus 1,300 equals 20,000. Okay, let's kind of take a look at this whole thing, big picture, and I think I can sort of sum things up for you a little bit here. So we've learned in this series of videos three different depreciation methods, straight line, 
units of production and double declining balance. These in my class would all be testable. I would expect students to know how to do these calculations. Not only that, but the journal entries, debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation, that's not too hard. Why do we have these different methods? Well, they all serve different purposes. Straight line, the simplest, and it is certainly solves that problem. Units of production is useful. If you notice, in years where we drove the car the most, we depreciated it the most. In years where we drove the car the least, we depreciated it the least. So there's sort of some intuitive sense, right? The more you use an asset, the more you depreciate it. The less you use an asset, the less you depreciate it. So I, on that sense, it makes a lot of intuitive, intuitive sense. Double declining balance is by far the most aggressive. It says, look, this asset loses value quick in the early years. Let's depreciate it quick in the early years. And look at those first two years compared to the other methods. Way higher, right? And then less depreciation in the later years. So it's saying almost like resale value. This thing loses resale value a lot quicker than the other methods are giving it credit for. That's what double declining balance says. And so all three serve their own purposes. When I was a student just learning this stuff, I way preferred units of production. I just said, yeah, the more you use an asset, the more you should depreciate it. That was Tony Bell's favorite as a student. However, as a practicing accountant, and most practicing accountants would agree, most practicing accountants choose straight line. And I, I think I can give you a bit of a reason for it. Um, straight line is by far the simplest. And let's talk about the flaws of, of well, we'll start with units of production, which was my favorite. The first flaw is, like lots of assets, units of production just doesn't make sense for. You know, I'm sitting in a chair right now. If I want to depreciate this chair, how would I depreciate it on units of production? Would I say, how many times my butt hit the seat? And I estimated it'll last 100,000 butt hits of the seat. Or, you know, what if I gain a lot of weight? You know, it just doesn't make any sense. And most of the assets, I'm looking around my room here, most of my assets don't work for this. You know, cars do but most other assets wouldn't work very well for this. So most assets, units of production just doesn't work. The other reason units of production is less popular is I think of my mom's job. My mom was a home care nurse. She would drive a, a province of British Columbia nursing car and go to like old folks houses and help them with their injections and things like that, right? Help them with their medical care. So, uh, I imagine the accountant for the province of British Columbia, let's say they said, look, cars are, make sense for units of production. And they have a fleet of 100 cars around the province, right? Uh, and they want to do units of production. And so on December 31st, they got to get nurses of each of those 100 cars to go out to the odometer and check how far did the car drive this year. And each car, they got to keep track. Okay, that car drove 13,000 kilometers. Oh, that one drove 15,000. You know, and they're all the same fleet of cars. They're all the same car. That car drove 18,000. And each one gets its own depreciation entry. Or, or the accountant could say, hey, our cars are all, all a year older. They all depreciate $4,000. Debit, you know, the depreciation entry takes five seconds or it takes hours and hours of coordination. And for what benefit, right? The units of production, it's, a, it's an estimate. These are all estimates, right? These are all estimates. The units of production might be a marginally better estimate, but even that is debatable. And so as I've become a more pragmatic accountant, I think, no, straight line's probably the way I'd go for just about all of my assets, and it's the most commonly used. Double declining balance is second most common, and the reason companies in Canada use double declining balance is because the government for taxes mandates a form of declining balance. Uh, if you look up something called CCA in Canada, it is the government regulated depreciation. And the reason governments like declining balance methods is because it's harder to manipulate. So if I were an unethical accountant, and I'm very, very ethical, and I wanted my expenses to be higher, so my profits would be lower. And, and if my profits are lower, of course, my taxes are lower. I want to cut the government out as much as I can. One way to do it would be to make the useful life shorter, right? Rather than five years, if I made this four years, well, guess what? I'm dividing by four and uh, my depreciation expense gets higher, 
right? If you have a shorter life, the depreciation expense is higher each year, and expenses are higher, means profits are lower, you're paying the government less. The government doesn't like this. They go, oh, uh, we can see, like, uh, companies are going to manipulate their residual value. Companies are going to uh, manipulate their useful life. Change those numbers, and guess what? You change your taxes, too. And the government hates that. So they just say, look, you bought a new car, congratulations. Take, I think it's uh, 30%. They say uh, they allow 30% as the rate for a car. You bought a new piece of equipment, take 20%. You got a new building, take 4%. So if we look at our table here, you can't manipulate the beginning book value because that's an actual number. That's what you paid for the asset. The number of months the government, uh, well, they know the dates, and so that doesn't really matter. Depreciation rate, they tell you the rate. So you can't manipulate that either, and so therefore you can't manipulate your depreciation expense they feel pretty solid about that number. So the government requires units, uh, co companies to use a form of double declining balance. That's fairly frequently used and it's 100% used when you do your taxes. Um, that said, companies by and large use straight line the most and, and I do agree with that. So again, when I was a student, I liked units of production the most. It made a lot of intuitive sense to me. As a practicing accountant, I don't care for it very much. Okay, there you have it. We've completed a 2 a Hopefully you've got the technical understanding and a little bit of background. And if you hung in there through all of that explanation, if you got to the end of this video, boy, I hope you liked it. All right, hope you liked the video, hope it's been helpful, and hope you have a great day. That's all for this video. Stay tuned for our next one.